Now on BBC One style, a plom and a world of fantasy for just a minute. to just a minute this delightful, engaging, often challenging and sometimes quite ridiculous game in which I ask my four guests to speak on a subject that I give them and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition or deviating from the subject. Let us meet the four bright entertainers who today are going to play just a minute. They are the delightful Maria McCurlane and sitting beside her the engaging Steve Punt. And on my left, the always amusing Wendy Richard, and beside her, the equally funny Linda Smith. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> and they are going to display their verbal ingenuity and dexterity as they try and keep going with the subject I give them. And we're going to begin with Maria McCurlin, and who better? The subject, the great British public. What a good subject to start the show with today. Maria, speak on it for just a minute if you can, starting now. The great British public are... are <laughs> public. Uh, uh, who's challenged? <laughs> Nobody, Nobody did. The great British public are <laughs> represented here by our wonderful and charming audience. And they are really... Uh, you've challenged, Steve. Well, it's not repetition or deviation, um, but it is just gross <laughs> bottom licking. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I know where the gross bottom is as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your challenge within the rules of just a minute? Well, the, 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 the challenge at is, all. is that... Um, you can I invent a new challenge? You, hesitation. No, you, can, can, I think I, you could have had a for hesitation when she started, but you failed to do that, so I say, I'm sorry, it's a wrong challenge. Mm. So, Maria, you have a point for an incorrect challenge. You keep the subject. There are 50 seconds available. The great British public starting now. One of the members of the great British public is the man on the Clapham omnibus. I've never been too sure of who this particular chappy is on this particular contraption. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wendy, you got him first. A bit yeah. too particular yeah, there. A bit too particular yeah. for my own reason. <laughs> You've right. got to say Clapham Common for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Great British public is the man on Clapham Common. <laughs> yes. 40 seconds for you, Wendy. You've got a correct challenge. You get a point for that, of course. It's the great British public with you starting now. I think the great British public are truly wonderful because they watch the programmes we're in and that, in a way, they are paying our wages. They also send really nice fan letters. Sometimes you get the odd dodgy one, but in the main, they're all very friendly and obviously pleased to see you. The great... Uh, Steve Punt. I still haven't thought of a name for this particular challenge. <laughs> but it's the same one as last time. What? Do I take it that I've failed again? <laughs> nauseating last time when I was accused yeah. of it. I don't think anyone being... plays I the game. I wasn't being nauseating. Oh. I wasn't buttering them up like what you were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, you, nobody plays a game like you do, Steve, but uh, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't <laughs> correct channel with the rules adjustment. I think we enjoyed hearing from you. Give him a bonus point. Yeah. yeah. But Wendy was interrupted, so she gets a point for being interrupted because in, technically it was an incorrect challenge. Wendy, you still keep the subject. There are 23 seconds available. The great British public starting now. The great British public are so true and loyal to this wonderful country in which we live. They're the ones that keep the place going and have the fighting spirit, which is what we need, especially in these rather dark days we happen to be going through. Hopefully, they will soon be over and there will be sunnier times ahead. The great British public are the ones that support... Oh, you... Steve, you're challenged. I, I'm not really challenging. I'm just saying that I will vote for Wendy Richard. <laughs> Another point to you, Steve, because oh. we enjoyed oh. what you said, but Wendy wasn't technically deviating from the subject of the great British public. You have a one second, Wendy, to go on it, starting now. The great British public. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point, and it was Wendy Richard, and she has taken the lead, a strong lead at the end of the round. And uh, Steve Punt. <laughs> 
Would you like to take this subject of friendship? Friendship is what's on the card. Speak on it if you can. 60 seconds, starting now. Um, friendship is a wonderful thing, a sustaining thing to, through the minefields of Baal. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Too many things. Too many things. Well, Maria, you've got friendship. You have 56 seconds, starting now. I have a special friendship with someone not a million miles from here. His name happens to be Nicholas Parsons. His wife, Annie... <laughs> oh, please, don't let's go down that old... <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't she go down there? Oh, go there? on then. Get <laughs> on with it. An incorrect challenge. Marie, you've got another point. You have 47, 48 seconds on friendship starting now. His wife, Annie, is fully aware of this particular friendship and chooses to turn a blind eye because she knows i am come from a home for the criminally insane <laughs> and that Nicholas is not at all interested. <laughs> uh, why the challenge, Wendy? Would you believe too, too much, Nicholas? Nicholas? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been Nicholas in my life. <laughs> Oh, gag. Yeah. Well, they said someone knows, uh, you know, somebody knows Nicholas Parsons, and other people say they know Parsons. And I don't know if I've got the gag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wendy, you have a correct challenge on that occasion. There are 38 seconds on friendship starting now. Friendship is the most important thing in your life. To have a true friendship with someone is so enriching. I am most fortunate in having at least three good friendships with various folk. And this makes me, I think, a wealthy person. Because if you can count on one hand the friendship that you have known during your time, then you are a most fortunate person. Uh, Linda, you've challenged. Just that I'll vote for her as well. <laughs> <laughs> She did repeat fortunate. Oh, she did, did. I? Yes, you did. Oh, yeah. how unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to hear from Linda, having got a point for a correct challenge, on the subject of friendship. 15 seconds, starting now. Friendship is a marvellous and important thing, because if it weren't for your friends, who on earth would you talk about behind their backs? <laughs> you need someone to gossip about in this life. Uh, Maria. Two abouts. Two abouts. Oh. We're getting about a bit too much. Yes. About so, about Maria. This. The audience is about to react to that. She was a correct challenge. F five seconds are available, Maria, on friendship starting now. I would like to be able to talk about friendship, but as I have absolutely no friends, I find myself unable. Oh. <laughs> Maria McCarlin kept going to the whistle and gained that extra point for doing so, and I would have challenged for deviation because I know Maria McCarlin has got lots of friends. <laughs> She's deeply loved within Nicholas, the... Nicholas, you're being pathetic. Just get on with it. <laughs> I'm just giving back Maria what she gives to me, and it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> the audience enjoyed that. <laughs> Gave you a vicarious thrill, didn't it? <laughs> it is all sort of titillation going on. Right. Take uh, more than that to give me a vicarious thrill. <laughs> no, I think for you, Nicholas, it will be a precarious thrill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Thank you. I'm a good sport for these Points girls, aren't me. I? <laughs> right, who's going to speak next? Wendy Richard, it's oh. you. Uh, oh, at the end of that round, by the way, Wendy, um, Maria McCann is equal in the lead with Wendy Richard. Wendy, you begin the next round. The subject, oh, this is a good one, knicker elastic. <laughs> <laughs> a nice audience reaction. Tell us something about knicker elastic in 60 seconds, if you can, starting now. Knicker elastic can be most important, especially when you're at school, when you had to wear those dreadful great navy blue bloomers. I'm sure most people will remember them. I Knicker don't. elastic. <laughs> Excuse me, you interrupted me. Give me an extra point. <laughs> She demands and she gets an extra point. Carry on. Uh, 40, carry on quickly, 37 seconds, starting now. And it's also useful for making catapults. Unfortunately, some little lads would use this knicker elastic for making these devices and then firing. Um, yes, Maria. I don't really want it, but uh, it's two makings. It was, yes. Yes, yes it was. Yes. It's, it's Nicholas's fault. He threw me, <laughs> interrupting me like that. Well, then well, I think I got a give point it back from it, Wendy. I gave you an extra That's point. That's not the point, Nicholas. You oh, interrupted my train of thought. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look, this is sharp, isn't stop it? Stop all this arguing. I'll take it, Nicholas. I'll take the subject. No, 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 Maria's won argument. the subject legitimately. He doesn't want it. Yeah, but I don't care to give it to you. Oh, <laughs> oh I say. It's a you girl's remember what you were saying before about no friends? <laughs> <laughs> Do you wonder at it? <laughs> Maria, try and go on knicker elastic for 26 seconds if you can, starting now. I don't think they actually make knickers with knicker elastic any longer. Do they? Because nowadays, in popular... 
Linda. Hesitation. <laughs> yes, you did get in after all on this subject, uh, Linda. So, 19 seconds. You tell us something about knicker elastic starting now. Knicker elastic is rather an outmoded item these days because it's been superseded by lycra. Whenever I'm walking behind someone in lycra cycling shorts, I always uh, think. Oh, yes. Too much lycra. Yes. Can you have too much lycra? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're a woman who'd know, I think. When well, it's, it depends who you're walking behind. Sometimes there's too much lycra. Well, sometimes you do, it does make you think, oh, I must remember to get a bag of satsumas. Yes, oh, yes, I know it feels All right, so satsumas, right. <laughs> We do get round the world, don't we? Nine seconds, Wendy, for... Don't look at me like that, darling. You got an extra point last time I interrupted you. No, I'm trying to look intelligent, Nicholas. I know it's very difficult for me. Go on. <laughs> Nine seconds. Knicker Elastic starting now. Knicker Elastic is actually obsolete these days because most ladies' intimate apparel... Uh, Maria McCurley. I think she had a these days in the last time... We well, did say these days before when you were talking. I don't know. I can't remember, Nicholas. You've been waffling on for so long, I've forgotten everything that's Darling, gone before. I haven't before. spoken nearly as much as you have. Yes, well, you're not supposed to, are you? You're only supposed to announce the... Ra How many rounds are there in this game? <laughs> <laughs> well, we get round... Uh, everybody speaks three times, so there's 12 rounds. 12 you rounds. Sometimes... That's, well, that's 12 rounds more than you've ever bought. <laughs> Her making the remarks, the idea that you should applaud her. <laughs> You've never been out with me into the pub or anywhere. Thank God, I know. <laughs> I was supposed to be others be first. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's all good fun. Wendy, uh, Maria, you had a correct challenge. You have four seconds on knicker elastic starting now. Knicker elastic can be very useful for changing your fan belt. Should you. Speaking as a whistle and then that extra point and has gone into the lead a hen a hen a hen <laughs> well there's so many hens here today you know there's a wee hen that's one because my Glaswegian coming get out get on now hens get that's on right, I can't get Jimmy get on with it don't tell me to me like that I can't help it my Glasgow background comes out occasionally right a lot of wee hens I've got three hens and a stallion here right now um, <laughs> don't you mean three hens and a cock yes I do but I thought I'd try that it's just hang on I I wasn't trying to put the two together. I just thought that I, I paid the extra. I know you were mixing your metaphors. I know I was, but I was paying them this extra compliment. It seemed to be better what? to be a stallion than Bet a cock. <laughs> <laughs> Cocks have a good life, but stallions. Not if you're a hen. Let me tell you. Excuse me. <laughs> are we doing just a minute or farming today? <laughs> Somebody make their mind up. Are you, when... you going to release one of those videos where it says all the bits they couldn't show on TV? <laughs> Because otherwise they people keep... will never see all these gems. No, no, they? they'll keep all of this because it's fun. And that's what <laughs> just a minute's all about. Ah. Linda Smith, your turn to begin. Airports. Tell us something about those frustrating places in this game starting now. Airports. The trouble with airports is that they're always too far out of town. I'm sure if Heathrow were somewhere more sensible, like Leicester Square, I'd miss far fewer flights. One good thing about airports, though, is the travelator. I love that. I think pavements should be replaced with those walking aids. We could glide <laughs> along like lovely swans. It would be a beautiful world. And also the roads could be replaced with... <laughs> what are you standards for, Steve? Well, this is the, the, the travelator is a relatively minor part of an airport. And we're spending quite a long time on this. It is part of an no, airport. No, but she was being so lyrical about it. And she well. was. She was going with style and aplomb. And, uh, but and there are also and travelators. Four suitcases, um, which is why she needs a travelator. <laughs> <laughs> when Linda, I think you did magnificently, Thank and you, I had this wonderful image of you on your travelator running on the pavements of Pimlico or wherever you live. And uh, so you have an incorrect challenge, and you have 37 seconds. I think you've misunderstood what a travelator is. Then it it's is. one of those things you stand on and you move along, and you don't have to walk. Yes. Well, you can walk on it if you so want to. What, but they carry you. Do they have to, them in Pimlico? No, I she was suggesting in her world of fantasy, wouldn't it be lovely if pavements were, were travelators or whatever you call the things? Yes. And oh, that's I what wish I I'd never saying. mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you see this travelator talk is tearing us all apart? <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you can go I've into... I've been a... over-pedantic. No, you're I, not. I, I... You can go into a realm of fantasy in just a minute, if you wish. And that's what Linda was doing, poetically, I think. So... It's now, though, Nicholas. It's the gone, moment's it? gone. The, the travelator's broken, gone. has it? Mm -hmm. Well, gather your forces. 
pull in your knicker elastic and go on airports and you have another 37 seconds starting now. The thing I don't like about airports is when they ask you that stupid question, did you pack your bags yourself? Of course I did. And then they say things like, is there any electrical goods in your... Oh, but, uh, <laughs> yes. I was better with the fantasy, really, wasn't I? Yes. Uh, yes, it was a great fantasy. I loved it. Uh, but, Wendy, you challenge first. Yes, she did hesitate there. 24 seconds, airports with you, starting now. Airports can be the most depressing places, especially when you've just been told your flight is delayed by over half an hour. And, but, in actual fact, they're lying, because two hours later, you're still sat there. Anyway, uh, it was hour and hours. No, I thought it was a little touch of hesitation. No, I'm afraid there wasn't, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get round me now. I don't have to get round you, Wendy. I know you well enough. Uh... Not in the biblical sense, I hate to <laughs> No. Uh, Wendy and I disagree with this challenge, so you've got ten and a half seconds on airports starting I now. I forgot what I'm saying now. I'll anyway, now quickly. most airports, I find, can be upsetting. I had the most unfortunate flight back from Belfast the other day. The plane was delayed, and then we were taxied all round. All right. Uh, Maria, you challenged us before the whistle. It was a delayed. It was a delayed. You were delayed twice earlier on when you were speaking about being delayed. I know we were delayed for the plane taking off, and then we were delayed getting off it when and we got to the in. airport. Earlier on, when you were talking, you said your flight. Yes, I know, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I was only trying to but justify the, but the bell. Went the whistle went. No, she passed just before the whistle. I know sometimes when you get into an argument, you're you like a little fellow. You won't crawler. let go. You've been <laughs> sucking up to her all day. <laughs> Don't you think you've ever noticed? Well, she's a lovely creature to suck up to, isn't she, Wendy? But I'm always fair within the rules of just a minute. <laughs> Maria McCurlin, you have half a second on airport starting now. I'm on my way to the airport. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maria McCurlin was then speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point. She's now one point ahead of Wendy Richard. In, she's in the lead and Wendy second. And then it comes Linda Smith and Steve Punt in that order. And Maria, it's your turn to begin. The subject, endangered species. Tell us something about that in this game, starting now. Many people would say that you are a member of the endangered <laughs> species, Nicholas. Oh, spud. <laughs> Sorry. Spud, start. <laughs> press your buzzer. Spud. <laughs> yes, you challenge. Um, what for? Where do I start? <laughs> Hesitation. Don't, 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 what for? <laughs> hesitation. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, there were any number of things. I had hesitation. You could was have one of for them. deviation. Am I endangered species? You could have had it for that. <laughs> yes. Listen, from where you're sitting, you're very much endangered, Nicholas. <laughs> I would be very careful if I were you. Um, <laughs> Steve, correct challenge. Well, listen, in there like a shot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But she was, she was laughing. See, I know she was. I had a of hysteria when I looked yeah, over at Nicholas. Yeah. I don't know why. She, we she frequently it... do. <laughs> that wasn't very funny and they didn't laugh, I'm pleased to I say. I wasn't talking to them, I was talking to her. <laughs> and I laughed heartily. A correct challenge to you, Steve Punt. Thank you. And right, I don't know how you I have managed it. You, well, you managed it well. You have 53 seconds. Tell us something about endangered species starting now. 53 seconds worth of endangered species. Mm. Uh, very simple task. Uh, the endangered species <laughs> for which I feel my yes, own Maria, no, that was all... <laughs> I know, but it was the best I've heard for a long time. So, I was, I was... I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt on this occasion and say that you didn't hesitate, though obviously you did, and say, carry on, please. 45 seconds, endangered species. <laughs> No, Maria, come on, we want to hear from Steve on this endangered species. You're getting it. I was not hesitating. I was demonstrating the mating call of the blue whale, which is <laughs> an endangered species. All whales are an endangered species because they are being hunted to extinction, principally by the Japanese and Norwegians who enjoy eating whales in special restaurants. Uh, Maria, why have you challenged? Two whales. You had two whales. I said you'd get in again, you see? Yeah. So there you are. I just wanted him to know that he was wrong, but I'd like him to have it back. It was whale no, no, and whales. Time. No, you had whale and whale, and you, then you, you had, had whales. whale and whales, and then you repeated whales. <laughs> I assure you of that. When you listen, I'm sure to... I did. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I did. <laughs> yes, Maria. It was a correct challenge. You take over the subject, so you get the subject back of endangered She's species. She's delighted. She wants the subject back because it's a really easy one. <laughs> right. 33 seconds. Endangered species, Maria, starting now. Maybe when species become extinct, it's because we don't need them anymore. The dodo. Please don't buzz me because that's a repetition, because it's not, it's do, and then another word like that, because... <laughs> <laughs> Who's challenged? Me, but probably I'm wrong. 
Why? Why are you challenged? She uh, had three does there, didn't she? <laughs> there, there, were, there were a lot of does. It was a bit like listening to Homer Simpson. She did Simpson. hesitate. <laughs> yeah. Dodo. She did hesitate I in a big way. I questioned myself on Dodo and then I realised, of course, that's the name of a you bird. You should never question yourself. No. Ever. Just Dodo do is a word. It's not a hyphenated word or two words. So it actually it's weren't the name being repetitious. Hmm? Yes. So, Linda, you but had But she a... did hesitate. And she did hesitate, Linda. You have a correct challenge and you have 21 seconds. Tell us something about endangered species starting now. I think endangered species were first brought to our attention by the delightful Mr Attenborough with his lovely safari suits. He's such a cheeky monkey going all over the world watching animals mate, which is a bit of a sauce really, isn't it? You wouldn't like it if he came round your house and looked in the window. But anyway, as they're animals, he feels he has the rights. But that's how we got to know that so... Uh, Maria. I think there were two animals mating. Yes, there was animals I know that's mating. the usual well, way. It's difficult with one. It's difficult with one. I know it. Yes. Maria, you've got him with two seconds to go Ooh. on endangered species starting now. As this was my subject, I feel. <laughs> and Maria McCurdy speaking as a whistle wind in that extra point. She's now, uh, oh, she's now four points ahead of Wendy Richard, and the other two are trailing just a little. And Steve Punt, your turn to begin. Yesterday. That is the subject, actually, Steve. I'm giving you a little time to think and, you know, gurgitate or regurgitate, whichever you have to do before you start going. 60 seconds if you can, starting now. Yesterday holds the distinction of being the most recorded popular song by any songwriter. It was written... Uh, yes? Song. Rubbish. No, so songwriter is hyphenated. <laughs> song and songwriter are two... Songwriter... Uh, forgive me. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Two completely uh, different words? No, no I just I love it when Steve gets angry. That's all I wanted <laughs> to say. <see. laughs> I knew that was what you liked and that's why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I was actually supporting you. Songwriters hyphenated, so you're perfectly all right. Carry you... on, darling. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> an incorrect challenge, so you have a point for that. You keep the subject and there are 55 seconds yesterday, starting now. It was written in 1965 by Paul McCartney, who wrote it while living with the Ashes in Wimpole Street in London. He fell out of bed one morning with the tune already in his head and ran to the piano, which was downstairs. The original lyrics, which you may know... Um, yes, Maria. I think there might have been two originals. Yes, it was the original yesterday, written by the Beatles, yes, and Paul Well, McCartney. I'm not telling you the rest, then. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably get in again if you listen strongly enough. 42 seconds, Maria, correct challenge, and you have yesterday starting now. Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe... Uh, yes. I have pointed out this is the most recorded popular song in history, so that must be repetition. <laughs> He gets very nasty, doesn't I he, know. when you challenge him? But, Major, he has had a bit of a lead from a bit of acid from three ladies today, hasn't he? But it's been fun. Steve, <laughs> ah, you have the subject what? still. You have, no, you haven't, you got it back again. 36 seconds yesterday, starting now. Yesterday didn't is start, all... did he? Carry on, quickly, before they buzz you. She got in there, didn't she? Hesitation, Steve. Steve. Yeah, I didn't even realise it was my turn to speak. I, <laughs> I said, Steve, start now. Did you? Right. Yeah. Well, I failed then. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, you have 20, uh, you have 33 seconds. Tell us something about yesterday, starting now. It's hard to believe that the same man who wrote yesterday also wrote the frog chorus. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> two ropes. There were two ropes oh. there, yes. So, you have yesterday, um, <laughs> Wendy Richard, you have 27 seconds, starting now. Yesterday was such a beautiful day, I took my pet dog, Shirley Brahms, for a lovely oh. walk in the park. And don't go, old Nicholas, because she's really very cute and everybody loves her. So, there. So yesterday was most. Uh, Maria. So yesterday. So so. It's two so's. Two so's. That's and you annoying me. <laughs> I became a right so and so to her. I'm so sorry. Right. But Shirley Brahms does come into just a minute so often, doesn't she? Yes. Well, if I hadn't have been buzzed, I would have gone on to explain who Shirley was, wouldn't I? And they'd have all have been riveted. <laughs> You might get a chance. How many seconds do I have? You have 15 se seconds available on yesterday, Maria, starting now. <laughs> yesterday, I was full of anticipation and excitement at coming here today to hear all about Wendy Richards' talk. <laughs> 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 yes, so uh, Linda, you got in first on hesitation. Seven seconds, tell us something more about yesterday, starting now. Yesterday I travelled up to this beautiful city of Birmingham and admired uh, it. Steve, you challenged. I just desperately wanted to get back in on this subject before we finish. <laughs> and I invent a challenge of some sort. Uh, deviation. She's that's not inventing, that's one of the regular challenges. Yeah, but uh, uh, she must be going to deviate because she's plainly just going to say something that happened yesterday. I'm going to say, do you want him to have it or are you going to carry on? Because, correctly, it's an incorrect challenge. Oh! 
Keep um, it, Linda. Keep know, it. Keep, yes, I'll keep yes, it. Yes, actually. Right. Why should he get in? Yes. Three seconds, Linda, on yesterday with you, starting now. Yesterday fades now from my memory <laughs> because... <laughs> That's what happens if they get interrupted. Psyched out. <laughs> but you did Sorry, get a Linda, point. I gave so I could take away with one Indeed. second left. You've got a point for being up for an incorrect challenge, so it wasn't all lost. So, Maria, you've got in first, and there's only half a second. We've got a wicked one, aren't you? On yesterday, starting now. Yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Maria McCurley and the game speaking to which men had increased her lead at the end of the round. <coughs> then it's Wendy Richard. Linda Smith and uh, Steve Punt in that order. And Wendy, which you now? The subject is soaps. Can you tell us something about that subject in this game? I'm sure you can, but you start now. There are so many different types of soaps. I think that you, Maria, would be probably Kame. I'm not sure about Stephen. He would be carbolic, but Nicholas is definitely simple. <laughs> <laughs> credit for that because somebody said it before me but it's such a brilliant line I thought I cannot possibly waste it but the other sorts of soaps are of course what you get on television and I happen to appear in one of them from time to time in this show uh, Linda time, time to time correct challenge <laughs> what was the subject now it's soaps and there are 29 seconds available starting now I much prefer soaps, soap operas as they're called on TV, to real opera, with that absurd singing of normal conversations. Would you like a cup of tea? Only uh, if yes, you're having one, do don't I... make one just for me. Yes, sorry, Linda, you were interrupted. Sorry, I was mid opera. Do I sniff a certain level of deviation here? Well, I don't know about your. How do you mean you sniff it? I mean, how can you sniff it? Um, you either you've heard it, but you can't sniff it. We swipped. We swipped? We, <laughs> we didn't swip, we swapped. Yeah. We swapped the subject of opera and then we stayed on opera for a little too long to qualify. All right, so. yes, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I said I'm always fair, yes, give you the benefit of the doubt. A little too long, bit of deviation there into opera from soap. And so you have, um, Steve, um, 18 seconds to tell us something about soaps starting now. When I was a lad, there was a thing called Soap on a Rope, which was a bit of a fad of the mid-70s, in which a bar of this substance, and I've just realised I'm allowed to say soap anyway, so a bar of soap was attached to a piece of string. Um, you're to say bars. No, I'm not. You're right. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy got in first. So, Wendy, you got soaps back, and you have seven seconds starting now. It's very important to pick the right sort of soaps to use, because they can bring you up in a nasty rash if you don't get the right soap. Speaking of the whistle ring, James, an extra point for doing so, and we've reached the end of the show today. What a pity we've enjoyed ourselves. Let me give you the final situation. Steve Punt, who contributed so much, finished up in fourth place, but only just. He was only one point behind Linda Smith with a great contribution there. And then it came Wendy Richard, who has won on occasions, but just a few points ahead of her was Maria McCurlane. So today we say, Maria, you are our winner. This edition of Just a Minute. It only remains for me to say thank you to these four delightful and intrepid players of the game. Maria McCurlane, Steve Punt, Wendy Richard and Linda Smith. From them, from me, goodbye. We hope you enjoyed it. Be with us the next time we play Just a Minute. Till then, from all of us, goodbye.